guys, it's Frank from Cruising with Wheels. And today we're going to talk about emergency procedures. Oh my God, emergency! I got the money! I got the clothes! Oh my Wait God. All right, I'll, I'll settle down. Settle down, Spanky. But there's an emergency. No, 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 no. There's no, there's, there's no emergency right now. But I got the cash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thanks for getting the cash. Thank you. Uh, no emergency in our house. Just, Jesus. Settle down. And we're going to... Uh, Do I have to call 911? No, 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 you have to call 911. We're just going to sit here for a few minutes, calm yourself, and we're going to tell everybody what the procedures are for a possible emergency on a cruise ship. Oh, well, why didn't you just say that? Oh my God, I tried. So, uh, with all seriousness, we really want you to be prepared in case there's an emergency, and that's why we're preparing this video for you today. That's right. Now, on a regular basis, for guests that are in regular stateroom cabins, that's scary enough. Right, and we don't mean to, to separate regular from disabled but for lack of a better term you've got your regular category cabins right. and you have your handicap accessible right. cabins. And for those of us who are in wheelchairs or using walkers um, or knee scooters or, or regular scooters um, it's scary to think about there might be an emergency on the cruise ship. Exactly. And, and how you're going to be evacuated. And who's, how, who's coming to get you? Right, and how everything's handled. Right. So we're going to start out with talking about mm -hmm. how you can prepare, what is a muster station, uh, and a generalization, a general how to be prepared. And then we'll get to the breakdown of the differences for the disabled guests. And if you are traveling with small children, uh, youngsters, teenagers. So... What's the big noise you'll be looking for if there's an emergency? Oh my god, it's so annoying, isn't it annoying? It's loud, but it should beep, be loud. Beep, 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 <laughs> beep, 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 beep. And it goes on and on and on, and it's crazy. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, was, was that not yes, that excellent? Was pretty, pretty <laughs> close. <laughs> It was pretty, pretty <laughs> close. Yes, seven short blasts mm -hmm. followed by one long blast. That is the emergency uh, sound that they're going to do for you if something's going on with the ship uh, and you need to get off. And I would say that, that that's a general, right? So um, I'm assuming all cruise lines do the same. I'm, I'm assuming that, that it would be a standard emergency. A standard guests would not be able to memorize each crew line's right. emergency code. So I'm assuming it's a maritime. But if it's not, if it's, if it's not, don't come after us about it. Just remember, if you hear a bunch of short blasts and a really long one, <laughs> get your hiney to your muster station. And what's a muster station? Yeah. Well, a muster station is the place where the lifeboats are. Ah! <laughs> and, uh, you know, you will have to do a muster station safety drill prior to sailing. And tell us, uh, tell me a little bit about what it generally is about, that, I mean, our experience. Well, generally, and, we'll uh, get to our experience in a little bit, and um, because what, um, that'll be under the disabled. Dave and Darlene, yes. who traveled with us on our last cruise uh, and booked a regular cabin, uh, and what they went through. So gen generally, uh, what you'll hear is announcements, right? Mm -hmm. That um, that the muster drill will be at <laughs> such and such a time right. that you need to go to your muster station area. Right. Now, it's embarkation day. Um, embarkation means that's the day you're getting on the ship. We boarded the ship. We were on the ship around noon. We had lunch. We're touring around. Eh, the cabins weren't ready. Uh, but finally around... One, two o'clock, cabins were ready, we went in, we took a look around, we unpacked a few things, and of course, 
uh, the information that was on the bed, the, the, the daily newsletter, was muster safety drill will be held at 3.30. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, but I'm just kind of winding down and I really like to take a nap. But in about an hour, we're going to have to be up doing the muster drill. So for Dave and Darlene, what did they have to do? So Dave and Darlene uh, go to their cabin and they would have a sheet of paper that says this is where you have to go for your muster station. Right. So they went, because they're in a regular cabin, uh, they were in a balcony, I think. They had a balcony. Oh, so lucky. But on the, uh, on the inside of their cabin door, uh, similar to a hotel, oh, if yeah. you're in a hotel and it gives you like emergency exit route, it's the same thing. So it really isn't that different and it shows right. you the, the route to get to your muster station that your cabin is assigned to and whatever it is, whatever it's like 7H or G3 <laughs> or whatever it is. And as well as it's also probably on your it's, sail and sign card. It's always on your sail and sign mm-hmm. card. Now, on our sailing uh, with Dave and Darlene, we were on deck eight and they were on deck nine. We were in very different locations right. on the ship. So their muster station was completely different from our muster right. station. Uh, and their drill was actually held outside. Outside where the lifeboats are. I mean, they actually went outside gathered in front of the lifeboat boat excuse me i'm having a slight <laughs> a slight uh, <laughs> emergency emergency <laughs> a slight emergency i might have to reset okay there we go um and so they were actually at the spot where they would end up being should there have been an actual emergency um now us we didn't do right. that uh anyone that's in a handicap cabin musters uh, their drill anyways is usually in a lounge mm-hmm. or some place right. that's a little more centralized right. so as to make it more convenient right. for because again you're dealing with wheelchairs and scooters and walkers and mm-hmm. people that are not able to you know get out on on the deck and we've been in a variety of places on the different cruise lines. I mean, yes. you, you were either in in the main dining room, uh, we were in the library on one cruise line, uh, or a, a small cafe in another. So it's held in different spots, but you will be notified where you will be directed to go to. Now, we can't impress on you enough. You better show up for that yes. muster drill. What's going to happen if that you don't show up, Frank? Do you know what happens? Okay. They're going to come find you because at the muster drill, uh, they have their clipboards. And it says, like, when we went to the main dining room, we were on the Jade. We were assigned Section 8. And we sat in Section 8. There is a crew member assigned to each section. Mm -hmm. They have our names and our cabin number, and we had to sign our name. We even had to scan our cards. Yes. So. And so you have to prove that you were there. And let me tell you, if they don't have you. Right. It's maritime law. Mm -hmm. They cannot leave the dock until everybody has completed the muster drill. So (laughs) if you don't want 4,000 other people to be very angry at you, and I have seen YouTubes. You just yeah. have to you uh, type it in the search <laughs> bar of people that haven't shown up. They've actually announced their names yes. and their cabin numbers, which uh, I'm sorry, John Held from Carnival. I think that was very unprofessional of you to do that. But, they, you know, they'll call you right out. They will. And then you're going to have so a miserable time. They can't leave. Right. And so if you're thinking, oh, I'm on a cruise, I'm at the bar, eh, these suckers... Let them go to this muster thing, whatever that is. I'm going to sit here and keep drinking you know, my, my mojitos. You know, and, not the Jade, have and the Jade, they, they actually were pretty smart about that whole thing. They shut down all the bars, yeah. all the lounges, and all the um, food venues. There's no place like to go. a half an hour prior. So yeah. it was like, sorry guys, out of luck. You yeah. You're not so going to skip this. Us. This is very serious. It's, it's very, very serious. And we want so. to impress on you that... It's not just serious for the cruise line, but it's serious for but you too. You need to be informed. I know everybody when they get on the plane, you know, and the and the the, the flight attendant is doing their seatbelt thing and oxygen, and everyone's like, yeah, whatever. I'm well, reading look, my magazine. Where's look at my what's drink? happened recently in the news. <sighs> yeah, another. Was, and people weren't prepared because weren't they prepared. weren't paying attention right. because 
you think it's just they're just right. going blah blah and, blah right. blah and blah. And we're not sitting here thinking we're that we're all doom and gloom and are preparing for the worst, but we prepare you're, for you're, the worst and are pleasantly surprised. Hope for the best. But when your life is at stake, I would think it would behoove you, my word for the day, behoove you behoove. to um, take Today charge. Is and, by behoove. Yes, take charge and responsibility of your own lives and well beings. It just makes sense yes. to me. So that's what we, we are always aware of our surroundings. We always we never go into a place, whether it's a restaurant, a movie theater, a shop, a store in a shopping mall, that we do not know how to quickly exit. Mm -hmm. Two things. Or get to the bathroom. Thank you. That is the second thing. <laughs> yes. How to get in and out. Uh, where are the bathrooms? Two things we always know. But on that note, um, what's the biggest thing? Well, the, the biggest thing that I like to do in uh, this situation is always have a plan. Right. Uh, growing up, my father was a fireman, um, and we, we would have regular drills of... Um, where are we going to meet? What do we need to bring? Uh, what would happen in case of an emergency? What if I can't get to this up uh, this way? Maybe I can go this way. But we always had a plan. So we've come up with a plan for you uh, when you have an emergency on a cruise ship. Nobody wants to hear their husband or wife or whatever go, oh, what, the ship is going down? Eh, we'll wing it. Right. <laughs> So, wrong person to be with. Wrong answer. <laughs> so, we say follow my father's advice and have a plan. Right. And the plan that we've designed for ourselves, we hope that you will follow. We want you to think about a designated area to meet. Now, a designated area to meet for us would be the muster station. Right. Don't go running back to your cabin. Go get your fanny back right. to the muster, uh, get your fanny to the muster station. Um, if you're near your cabin, grab, go to the cabin, grab your, right. your life jacket because you want to have that. But uh, if I'm an aft cabin and we're all the way forward, I am not running. Uh, first of all, I'm going to be able to run uh, across the whole ship to get those life jackets. But there are life jackets all around the ship. Yes. You'll notice a, a lot of like large crates and chests and things. Life jackets are stored all over the ship. So don't think that if you don't <clears throat> have yours, I mean, they're counting on you to, to have it because for every person in the cabin, there's, there's a life jacket. Correct. Whatever it accommodates. If your cabin accommodates four, there's four life jackets. If your cabin accommodates eight, but maybe it's just me and Kevin, there's still eight life jackets mm -hmm. in your cabin. It's whatever it accommodates. Now, the second thing that we suggest is designate a person to go to the cabin. Now, in our situation, it would be me because right. I can probably move faster than Frank can right. roll. Kevin is going to rely on the crew to take care of me, which they will, and we'll talk about that in a second. So, obviously, uh, Spider Legs here mm -hmm. is going to be heading back to the cabin uh, to do his thing. Now... The cruise lines will tell you, don't run to the cabin, don't right. get anything, get to your muster station. Right. That is the utmost important. Right, because it's your safety and it's kind of like abandon whatever in your cabin, right. it's not important, go to the muster station. But Now I have to say that the, this, this designated person to go back to the cabin is, is kind of like, um, it's iffy because if, it's sink, if the ship is indeed sinking yeah. and it's going down fast, Screw everything you oh, got absolutely. in the cabin. Who cares? Your right. life is more important. Right. So if the ship is going down like Titanic, okay, and you're running around and you happen to run into the, you know, the engineer, you know, designer, and he looks at you and goes, and goes <laughs> I'm sorry oh, I didn't build you a better oh, ship. Young Rose, I'm sorry I didn't build you a better ship. Get to the nearest lifeboat. Okay, listen to him and get to the nearest lifeboat. Right. Okay? But otherwise, um, You'll know by the PA announcements, right? What and the urgency, urgency in their sounding and, and, voice, right? And, and level of emergency you're at. Uh, but I would be the designated yes. person to go back in the situation, and I would get three things and three things only, and we always have them ready and prepared, just in case. And you ask me, what are those three things? What are those three things? I'm going to tell you. I need to know your passports. Okay. 
And your money. Mm-hmm. Uh, and your medications. medications. Because if you are evacuating and you're in the middle of the ocean, there might be not be somebody showing I up for some time. I don't think there's a <laughs> pharmacy at sea. Right. Okay. And you're going to need your passports because it's you? a perfect identification. Right. You might be having to fly home from... Guatemala or wherever. wherever. Wherever the rescue ship gets you to is where you're leaving from. So, and and it's not like, you know, we're like sleeping at night with the emergency bag on the floor by the side of the bed with one hand Mm -hmm. on it, thinking, oh my God, any moment there could be an emergency. But it is all about being prepared. prepared. And these three things we keep in a Ziploc bag. In our safe. In the safe. So they're they're ready to go. Right. Kevin runs in. He goes to the safe. Do 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 do. Safe opens. He grabs. Goodbye to all our clothes, all our gifts, all. Our, who cares? That is the last Adios. thing about having a plan. Prepare that if you have an emergency, you are leaving everything behind. Mm-hmm. But what we told you. Right. You got those three things and the clothes on your back mm-hmm. and your life. That's right. So, so. Uh, that's what we suggest. Um, we already talked about the life jackets oh, yeah, that are all over the ship mm-hmm. and in your cabin. Uh, but now we're going to touch on uh, what happens to uh, disabled guests and how the cruise ships handle that. And Kevin was fortunate enough to be part of this uh, safety drill mm-hmm. when we were on the NCL Jade and was able to film it. Yep. I'm going to link that gonna link it above, above so and, that you right. can see that particular vlog if you want. But we're going to just talk but, a yeah, little bit about Touch that. about how they would handle uh, handicapped passengers. Well, there's actually a team set in place. They are not uh, assigned to um, uh, muster stations per se. They're assigned to cabin blocks because most of the handicap accessible cabins are blocked together. Right. And these crew members will be having on usually a blue vest with a handicap symbol on the back that says special assistance team, special needs team, special evacuation team. Uh, each cruise line has a little right. ver- different verbiage. And they are responsible for finding Me. your disabled guests. Right. Okay. They know what cabin we're in. They know what cabin you're in, uh, and they will go through cabin by cabin, checking to see if there are people in those cabins. And once the cabin has been completely gone through, and this includes the bathroom, so if you hear somebody knocking, don't just sit there. Right. <laughs> uh, and uh, then once it's been cleared out, they have a little placard or a little card that they'll put in the door lock. In the, in the key card. In the key card area that mm-hmm. says that it was evacuated. So if you do end up going back to your cabin after uh, somebody has already checked it, you need to call them and tell them, I'm in my cabin, I can't get down the stairs, I can't use the elevator, um, because these people will help you get to where you need to go. In addition to that, it's my understanding that um, if you haven't shown up at that lifeboat station and you're disabled and in a handicap room, uh, there's a system in place that they check the computer and see where your card was swiped last. So your sound sign card is kind of like a little locator of you. So if Frank was up getting schnookered at some bar and... (laughs) I was in the restaurant getting another piece of peanut butter cheesecake with caramel sauce, they will know. They'll know that he's there and that they need to go in that general area to try to find him. And um, they're... The, these people are highly trained. They do. Um, they do the drills. They all do. The time. They do the drill usually on a seven-day sailing twice uh, for the crew members. And a lot of you haven't witnessed that because they do it when we're in port. Right. And so again, Kevin was lucky enough to kind of be part of it. It was and, really, really cool. And film it, which we were so happy to be able to 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 get that video and uh, put it on our YouTube channel and give you that kind of important information. Definitely. Right, now the last thing we want to talk about is uh, families with children. 
What mm-hmm. happens when you have little kids? What happens when you're separated? They're not with you. You know, parents are at the pool. Kids are in a daycare. Maybe they're at Splash Academy, Guppies. And they're this, doing arts and crafts. Right. And this is where I go back to having a plan, designating a person. Everybody has to have a job. Right. Okay. So what my findings were on our last cruise on the Jade was that guests that are sailing with young children, uh, the a parent will have to go and pick them up at Splash Academy or at Entourage. Uh, your children are not just going to be thrown to the wolves, find your muster station. You need to go pick them up. So if you hear these sounds, the seven short blasts followed by one right. long, Somebody's got to go hustle the right. splash. And I want to say, just while I have a thought in my head, mm-hmm. Mom, make sure Dad knows where the kid is. Uh, definitely. Okay, because Communication. you can't be the only one that knows today um, little Johnny is up in arts and crafts and Dad doesn't know. Because okay? what if you're separated? Right. So that's why we say, that's why I say, you know, one person should be responsible for a designated person to pick up the kids. The other person should be designated to go to the cabin. If you're a single parent bringing your children on the cruise, I would say, screw it. I'm not going back to the cabin. My kids are more important. Right. Uh, and from what I understand, there's a kind of a time limit. Uh, so don't think that you're just going to say... The crew members are going to... St- stay in the arts and craft class right. with your kids indefinitely when there's an emergency on the ship. So what, what I found out is most of the lines, what they do is wherever the children's activities are going on, uh, that's where you'll go pick up your child. And then after 20 minutes to a half an hour, they move whoever's remaining to a designated location for pickup. And that is generally the area that will be the last to be evacuated because they're, you need to get your children, right. you know? Now, I want to say that whatever cruise line you decide to go with, if you go with Carnival, if you go with NCL or Celebrity or Royal Caribbean or Costa or Princess, whichever line you pick, go online to their website and read all of the information they have posted on emergency situations, procedures, procedures and evacuations, mm-hmm. along with everything else. You know, it isn't just about where I'm going to eat, what show I'm going to see, uh, what excursion I'm going to buy. You need to take control of your cruise in terms of a possible emergency. So go through each cruise line, whichever one you picked, mm-hmm. and read thoroughly. Yeah, that's great advice. Preparation is key. That's right. So, we're glad we were able to bring you this bit of emergency information. We hope it never happens. I know. We want to remind everybody that we're on Facebook, Mm -hmm. Instagram, Twitter, here on YouTube. And Snapchat. Snapchat. (laughs) We will be live streaming, pop-up live streams uh, on our upcoming NCL Bliss cruise. That's right. Uh, We will be live streaming not only on YouTube, but Facebook, and we will be doing some snaps. Maybe I'll even post some pictures on Instagram. Ooh, boy. Yeah. Yes. And we want you to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Welcome to our new subscribers, and thanks for coming back to our regular Cruising with Wheels family that's already following us. Right. So, uh, on behalf of Kevin and myself, (laughs) we want you to travel safe and cruise often. Bye-bye. Bye.